back. Tensions remain high among truck drivers and buses in the industry after a number of vehicles were set alight following protests against the employment of foreign nationals last week. Afinza Mugwena is a transport economist and he's recently written an article titled Why Does a Looming Truck Driver Strike Signal an Industry Crisis? He's joining us by Skype now from his car, I'm told, in the middle of nowhere. Afinza, thank you so much for going to the effort to connect to us. So let's begin then with that quote. You say you ask why is the threat of a truck driver strike a symptom of an industry crisis? Help us answer that question. Well, you know, what we look for from just an analytical perspective is, is to try and figure out if there is any kind of evidence that an industry is experiencing diminishing returns in some way or another. And one of the first sort of anecdotes of evidence, at least, was the strikes that sort of started to manifest themselves. But when, when we started looking at the National um, Land Transport Survey, one of the pieces of evidence that came out was that we've got an, a freight industry that not only has a booming growth in the number of trucks, but also has a, an increase, of course, in the tons that are being shipped. But actually, the income per ton for the freight, road freight industry is growing at a rate slower than what you would find in the rail freight space. And those were the main parameters that we used to say, you know what, there's something going on here. It appears as if the market is saturated and there's more work that needs to be done. And in your article, you go on to speak basically about a great period of financial prosperity for the road freight industry. You say here that between 2010 and 2018, in 2010, the industry generated some 92 billion rand in income. That peaked in 2018 at about 165 billion rand. When you look at those numbers, great for shareholders and owners, but did the workers in the industry draw any benefit? You know that that's one of the that's one of the dimensions that we will be exploring in future, particularly with regard to how the the structure of the market is filtered through to the labor space. And because one of the issues that that we're seeing is that you know you've got the traditional large scale operators that we know these are major logistics firms. Then you've got you know medium sized and up to small scale operators who are basically consolidating a truck, a driver and the trailer and they're running some kind of contract in between and this whole coordination exercise is you know exposing certain drivers particularly those who are still open in the free market to different types of market practices and these are sim what we saw with the strikes was that there's a symptom of something else going on within the industry but gradually this is simmering and simmering and for us it brings, us, it brings us to a couple more questions um, than answers. What's, what do you see in your assessment will be the end to all of this? Because we speak about the tension between truck drivers, local truck drivers, and this freight industry every year. And there's a promise that there'll be an intervention either from government or whoever, yet almost annually we're back in the same spot. Yeah. And... So that's one of the that's one of the main motivators of of this kind of work is is largely because what we're seeing is that th there is something there that requires intervention, and you know one of the one of my points of departure was at some point the motor carrier or the motor industry or the road freight industry was reg was regulated in some way, but it was capacity limits and distance distance limits, and then we would. We deregulated it because of the nature of our economy at that point in time. And at this point, the question is, you know, if we're going to move consignments, well, some consignments from road to rail at some point or another, then what happens within the market itself? What are the scenarios that need to be tested? But the core of this, to get to your question more directly, is to explore the extent to which there is a need for economic regulation inside the road freight industry mm. and, and how that might actually help the industry, you know, operate in a manner that is more context specific, if not context sensitive, and if in fact that would be valuable or not. Another government task team now seized with this issue yet again after those protests last week. How much hope are you pinning on that process? Well, you know... My my argument is always that you know there's one it's one thing to have a political agreement, you know it's another thing to have an economic deal. So the Department of Transport so far has 
very important strategies that have been in the public domain. The next cycle is going to produce an implementation strategy, and many stakeholders are looking forward to the implementation strategy because it will be among the first to position us in a situation where we're actually saying this is what we're going to do for the industry. And that is a big sign that something else might be on the table, and we've got new policies that are in the pipeline as well. But still, the gap is still there, you know, somewhere between a political decision and an economic decision, we need to leverage on the opportunities that we have. Mm. I want to ask you about a voice that often goes unheard in this battle of, for employment in the freight industry. That is the voice of the foreign drivers who are said to have been employed. We're hearing that they are given these jobs driving the trucks because they are cheaper labor. But what is the treatment of the industry of those drivers just beyond payment? Well, you know, I'm not well versed with regard to what happens by with regard to a specific driver's experience. But what I am familiar with are the motivations for procuring the cheapest available labor. And the greatest exposure for a, for a foreign driver or any driver really, you know, to to participate in the market with the, at the cheapest price takes place where someone is at the bottom end of the contract, you know, in terms of the size of the deal that's happening in the logistics space. So if you're really, if the operator or whoever is consolidating the deal is at the bottom end of the contract, so they're basically scrambling whatever's left, then you will find that these drivers are the ones that are going to be most exposed. Final so question. the the exploration... Oh, yeah. uh, forgive me for yes, cutting yes, you off, ahead. yes. Uh, final question, who benefits from a truck industry that's in disarray? Oh, <laughs> I would answer it this way. There's always a risk of a syndication. There's always a risk of something else happening behind the scenes. That is always there, and we must be aware that that's a possibility. Ofense Mokwena, Transport Economist, thank you so much for being on ENCA this afternoon, and have a safe trip further.